Yesterday in our Delta Reader, we read about some changes in ecosystems. And what we talked about is the changes that humans make. So today what we're going to do is we're going to add to our interactive notebook some of the notes that we talked about yesterday. Think about this. People use... Um, what are some ways that people make a change in an ecosystem? What was one of the ways that we talked about? Exactly. They clear the land to build a road or a dam or um, a bridge. And by doing this, they make changes in the ecosystem. And what that does is that can make the area smaller for an organism that they're living in. So there'd be more competition for space, more competition for food and more competition for water among those same organisms that live in that little area, which was now this area by building a road or a bridge or a dam could be shrunk to an area of about this size. And that makes the competition greater. As the area shrinks, the competition increases. Um, another way that people use land in a way that was not intended is that they might use the land to get rid of their trash. Uh, and we call those a landfill, where people put solid waste that, that's basically garbage is what we're talking about. We're talking about plastic bags and, and disposable diapers and plastic bottles and broken televisions and solid waste. That means solid is something that has matter that you can feel, solid. This is a solid. And when this pen runs out of ink, I'll throw it into the trash. This is plastic, this is plastic, this part is plastic, this little part here is metal, but all of this will be thrown into the trash and that bag of trash I'll put outside of my door and I won't even think about it until right now I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking, oh, I'll put that bag of trash outside my door and then our custodian will come along in the evening and he'll pick up my bag of trash and he'll put it with all of the other bags of trash from all of the other classrooms on the second floor. And he'll take that down and he'll throw it outside into our great big blue dumpster that we have at the back of the building. And then we don't think about the trash anymore. But what do you think happens to that trash? My pen that no longer works because it's out of ink. Now a big dump truck comes along and they're going to pick up that blue that blue um, dumpster and dump it into their truck, and then they're going to drive away. Does that trash disappear? No. What happens to that trash? Is that solid waste? Papers, plastics, um, all of those kinds of things. Glass. Some people even put glass, which is totally recyclable, but some people put glass in trash that in a, a trash bag that ends up in a solid waste landfill. So then this truck takes it to wherever it is that Republic Trash Services, I have no idea where the, the landfill is, but there's got to be a landfill around here. They take it and they dump it into that landfill and the trash piles up. But they have to be very careful with that landfill because if they it hasn't been built properly, I, I mean, I don't know that it has, but if it hasn't been built properly, then what can happen is some of those things are toxic. Like if you throw a battery in there, it has battery acid in the battery. And eventually that battery acid will corrode the outside of that battery, the metal part. And that battery acid will leak into the environment around it. So if the landfill is not built properly, then that battery acid will eventually leak into the environment around it and it can damage the organisms that live in that area. Okay, so that's kind of what we talked about yesterday. <laughs> in a nutshell, let's go ahead and take some notes on this. We always begin our notes with our heading. The heading is your name, the date. Today's date is 12-8, December 8th, twenty. And the lesson is, hmm, what is it called? Human something. Human effect. We're just going to call it human. Um, human impact. Let's call it that. Human impact. Impact. Okay. That's what we're calling the lesson. All right, here is our first heading. People clear land to build new buildings, roads, etc. 
people clear land to build new buildings, roads, etc. Excuse me. People clear land to build new buildings, roads, etc. Go ahead and write that down. People clear land to build new buildings, comma, roads, comma, and then et cetera is ETC, period. Then go ahead and underline that because we're going to go put some bullet points underneath this. All right, first bullet point. This makes habitats smaller. This makes habitats smaller. This makes habitats smaller. Write it down. This makes habitats, hab, it, at, smaller. Second bullet point. Plants and animals have less space, food, and water. Plants and animals have less space, food, and water. Plants and animals have less space, food, and water. Say it as you're writing it down. Plants and animals have less space, comma, food, comma, and water. I'm going to write H2O because I almost out of space on that line. These animals move to a new area and cause competition there. These animals move to a new area and cause competition there. These animals move to a new area and cause competition there. Say it as you're writing it down. These animals move to a new area and cause competition, com, pet, it, Sean, there. Oh, that's it. That's the last bullet point. Okay, next heading. People use land to get rid of trash. People use land to get rid of trash. People use land to get rid of trash. Say it as you're writing it down. This is your next heading. People use land to get rid of trash. And go ahead and underline that because that's your next heading, your first bullet point. This is called a landfill. This is called a landfill. This is called a landfill. Say it as you're writing it down. This is called a landfill. Hold on, I have to adjust my... Um, notebook because I'm getting to the end and I'm writing funny. Okay, next bullet point. More than half our solid wastes are put in landfill. Is. More than half our solid waste is put in landfills. More than half our solid waste is put in landfills. Say it as you're writing it down. More than half our solid wastes is put in landfills. That is a lot. If you remember, it was 140 million tons, right? Landfills were once habitats for plants and animals. Landfills were once habitats for plants and animals. 
Landfills were once habitats for plants and animals. Say it as you're writing it down. That's your third bullet point. Landfills were once habitats for plants and animals. And your last bullet point. Landfills can harm nearby habitats. Landfills can harm nearby habitats. Landfills can harm nearby habitats. Say it as you're writing it down. Landfills can harm nearby, it's a compound word, habitats. Okay, now let's look at this chart. Let me find my chart. I buried it. And see if we can answer these questions before we add some more, more um, notes to our interactive notebook. Let me see if I can get it where you can see it without moving so much. Okay. What's the title of this chart? Exactly. How do we get rid of solid waste? That's the title of the chart right there. How many millions of tons of waste is put into landfills? Exactly, nearly 140 million tons. That's a lot. How many millions of tons of waste is recycled? Not nearly as much, about 80. If you read the chart correctly. Oh, my book is bent funny. Okay. And then how many millions of tons of, of waste is burned? I'd say about 30. If you look where that red line ends, it's between the 20 and the 40. I'd say about 30. This chart represents information from what year? If you are looking at this chart, not this, just look at the chart. What year does this give us information? Exactly. If you look way down here at the bottom, that's how you read this chart. It's telling us that it's the year 2006. Right there. That's how we know where this information is coming from. It's from the year 2006. All right, let's go ahead and add some more notes in our interactive notebook. We're going to put some, just some sentences, and we're going to underline some keywords as we write them down. All right. So the heading of what we're going to write now, we're still on the same page of notes, but the next heading is humans make changes to ecosystems. Write that down. Humans make changes to ecosystems. And go ahead and underline that because that's what this next section is about. And instead of bullet points, we're going to use complete sentences so we don't need to bullet point them. You can if you want to, if that helps you. Okay, here's our first sentence. Sometimes people bring a plant or animal to a place where it does not usually live. Sometimes people bring a plant or an animal to a place where it does not usually live. Sometimes people bring a plant or animal to a place where it does not usually live. Say it as you're writing it down. Sometimes people bring a plant or animal to a place where it does not usually live. Okay, next sentence. We're going to underline a couple words in this one. I'm going to let you give me the answer. Okay. The next sentence is going to say, these plants or animals are called, and what are they called? 
Yes, introduced species. These plants or animals are called introduced species. These plants or animals are called introduced species. These plants or animals are called introduced species. And go ahead and underline introduced species. These plants or animals are called, and I'm going to underline introduced, introduced, underline species. Underline. Actually, I think I am going to put bullet points because that helps me to keep my thoughts separate. So that was our second bullet point. All right, third bullet point. Okay, next sentence. Introduced species can harm other organisms. Introduced species can harm other organisms. Introduced species can harm other organisms. Say it as you're writing it down. Introduced species can harm, and I'm going to underline harm, other organisms. Okay, next bullet point. What do they do with other organisms? Um, both the organisms are doing what for the resources? What do we call that word? Yes, compete. They can compete with other organisms for resources. They can compete with other organisms for resources. They can compete with other organisms for resources. Say it as you're writing it down. They can compete, and I'm gonna go ahead and underline compete with other organisms for resources. Okay. Next bullet point. I'm going to give it to you in two parts because it's a super long sentence. The introduced species can multiply quickly. The introduced species can multiply quickly. The introduced species can multiply quickly. Say it as you're writing it down. The introduced species can multiply quickly. And I know that some of you guys can multiply quickly too. Six times three. See, that's multiplying quickly. Okay, here's the rest of my sentence. <laughs> if the new species does not have an animal that eats it. If the new species does not have an animal that eats it. If the new species does not have an animal that eats it. If the new species does not have an animal that eats it. What do we call that animal? We learned that in our last unit. A predator, exactly. We call it a predator. I need to go to the next page, so I'm going to show you the notes I have so far. Whoops. There we go. If you need to pause the video, which you might, to get these notes, go ahead and do that. I'm going to move on because we have one more section that we're going to put in our interactive notebooks. And that is about the European insect called the gypsy moth. 
Okay, this is, we're, con I'm, so I'm sorry, it's not a new section. We're still continuing now in the, the um, heading humans make changes to the ecosystem, but it's a new, we're, we're talking about a new thing now. So we're, I'm starting a new page because I'm out of space, but if you guys want to continue on, you can. So this is the next bullet point, all right? The European insect called a gypsy moth is an example of an introduced species. Oops. The European insect called a gypsy moth is an example of an introduced species. The European insect called a gypsy moth is an example of an introduced species. Say it as you're writing it down. And European is, oh, your, but we're going to use OU that we do not choose at the end of English words, your, O, P, an, European insect called a gypsy moth. And we're going to use IE to make the I sound, gyp, C. And then we're going to use IE to make the E sound, moth. And then I want you to go ahead and underline gypsy moth is an example of an introduced species. Introduced species. Let's go ahead and underline introduced species. And we're going to finish this sentence. That was the first part. That was brought into the United States. That was brought into the United States. That was brought into the United States. Go ahead and finish that. That was brought into the United States. And go ahead and underline United States. So that whole sentence, I'm sorry, I, it was on a different line. I didn't realize it was part of the same sentence. The European insect called a gypsy moth is an example of an introduced species that was brought in the United, brought into the United States, into the United States. Okay, next bullet point. The insect was going to be used for making silk. The insect was going to be used for making silk. The insect was going to be used for making silk. Say it as you're writing it down. The insect was going to be used for making silk. That's all basic code. You should be able to spell that one. All right, next sentence. The moths were kept in one place, but some got away. The moths were kept in one place, but some got away. The moths were kept in one place, but some got away. Say it as you're writing it down. The moths were kept in one place, comma, but some got away. Next bullet point. Okay. The gypsy moth caterpillars have killed many trees by eating their leaves. The gypsy moth caterpillars have killed many trees by eating their leaves. The gypsy moth caterpillars have killed many trees by eating their leaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. Say it as you're writing it down. The gypsy, gypsy moth caterpillars, which is spelled caterpillars, <clears throat> caterpillars, have killed 
underline killed. Many trees, underline trees, by eating their leaves, underline leaves. Okay, that is the end of our notes for today. At least I believe it is. Let me confirm that. It is indeed the end of our notes for today. Here is the second page of the notes. And this is all about the gypsy moth, basically. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to pause it in order to get all of the notes done. And I will be back tomorrow with more information on changes in ecosystem. And we will be in our Delta Reader reading pages 14 and 15. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.